Hello, hello, and welcome to today's episode of What's Doing. I'm your host, Abid, and I'm thrilled to introduce our guest for this episode, Shahila Shah, a luminary in the Malaysian creative industry. Shahila is a force to be reckoned with in reality television, documentaries, and blockbuster movies. As the new general manager of film production at Prime Work Studios, she leads a team of creatives. With a career of over three decades, she has been a key figure behind the scenes of some of Malaysia's most iconic television shows and films. From pioneering the first reality show in Malaysia, Academy Fantasia, to producing large-scale concerts and award-winning documentaries, Shahila's expertise in content creation is unmatched. Today, we are set to delve into the depths of her experience and explore the intricacies of producing content that resonates with the audiences locally and internationally. So without further ado, welcome Shaila Shah on What's Doing. Thank you so much for coming and it's an honor for us to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Shabit, for having me in the show tonight. So Shaila, can you share with us what inspired you to start your journey in the entertainment industry, particularly in reality TV? First of all, I think I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about their stories. Uh, and uh, how we weave their stories into a whole content, uh, the dynamic nature of the entertainment industry. So that drives me to start this journey, really. And reality TV, I, it was by chance that I got involved in the reality TV. We pioneered Academy Fantasia. It uh, originally started as La Academia from Mexico. So we bought the format. And we, our tasks were to adapt it for local consumption. Uh, so that was the first time I got involved with reality TV. So, and, and it's really, really challenging because that was the first time for everyone, from the people behind the camera, for our audience. We were not, we have never seen uh, content that goes on with like free flow sort, you know? So no censorship, no nothing. So it was just basically it was a format which you let the cameras roll and the emotions were real, the drama yes. was real, and obviously the performances were real. Yes. Okay. So reflecting on Academy Fantasia, what challenges did you face in pioneering Malaysia's first reality TV show? Okay. Uh, first of all, when we received the format, we previewed it on VHS at the time. <laughs> it was a video tape. That was a long time back. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it was just a one episode and you have to review and digest everything. So the first challenge that we faced were the original format. They placed the girls and the boys together. They sleep together, study together, dance together, things like that. So the challenge was how do we make it uh, suitable for, uh, for the local market that will resonate with the audience. So the first, uh, firstly, we have to separate the girls and the boys and we have to establish this. So we created those hostels for the girls, hostel for the boys, and how we also had to uh, integrate into the content, how to make it a bit more halal. So we have to break up for uh, prayers, for things like that. And, it, and it, we, we can't talk to the candidates, the contestants. So we have to go through the uh, trainers. They say, okay, after this, can you please uh, casually announce that uh, okay, boys, you go back to your hostel and I'm going to see you there. And girls, you go back to your hostels. So we have to subtly put it in the script. So it's pretty much part of the localization of, the, of, the, yes. of a foreign format into a local uh, sense, how it, True, how it yeah. makes sense. And I must say that at that time, you, the, the contestants, 12 of them, they, they have no access to the world outside. They have no idea how the audience, how the netizens respond to their... To, to their, how we portray the characters on TV. But we only had one interactive channel as we created one at 15, the interactive channel. So we would be watching the comments on daily basis. Some would allow us to, uh, to, to plan for the next day. If they say, oh, I don't see enough of this person. So that's how we take the comments and develop it into the story for the next day. So this was happening real time. This was happening real time. Oh, that's yes, so, but we can only make use through uh, with the trainers. Yeah, there's no way we can talk to them. We can't plan their movements because everything is re is reality. Everything is real, so we must make use of the trainers at that time. 
No, that's a lot, lot of hard work. You know? That's really hard work. Because a, a, and imagining it's happening at that point of time. Yes. And there are 12 of them. So you have to monitor each one of them, what's going on. Because you can't simply pick up just one audio bite. So you have to listen to all 12 of them. Wow. So sometimes they will have conversation, intimate conversations at the corner. And so that's how we study them. It's a bit like you have to, you're a producer, but you're also running a school. And you're the headmaster, and you are also the caterer. It's everything. Everything rolls into one. So it was really pretty interesting. Yeah, so much challenges, really. Oh, awesome! Means yeah, I I can understand. And that was a different time altogether. That was not yes the social media time. Yes. Right? So the the problems were different than what it, it could have been today. True, true. It will turn out differently, really. So how did you manage? Now this is a very big one. How did you manage to collaborate between? Invictus, Astro Shaw, and Primework Studios for Sanka. Okay, Sanka, that was a very interesting collaboration. You see, back in 2019, the budget was about 2.8 million for production alone. It was quite heavy though, it was quite big already. So we realized that by, by collaborating with other production houses, uh, other studios, it would uh, allow us to take a lower risk and we can spend more on the marketing. So we selected Astro Shaw because of their marketing strategies, uh, Infinitus Gold, they uh, were assigned to spearhead the productions, the production, the post, and Primeworks comes in as a distributor, and MM2 is one of the funders at the time. So it was good because we could leverage on everyone's skills and strengths, uh, and it proved to be a very good collaboration uh, from 2.8 million budget, we managed to garner about 12 million uh, box office collections. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. And, and that is where I think the co-production matters, you know, when, when you have a good story and but yeah. again, you want to go, uh, you want to take a little le less risk than what, uh, you know, the budget allows you. I think that's where the uh, co-production uh, works. Yeah. And I think it worked beautifully with this film. It was, it was a very good um, good partnership, I would say. We will learn from each other's uh, journey, experience. And what was the decision behind, you know, what was the process actually behind releasing J Retribusi on Disney Hotstar? On the OTT Is, platform. Yeah, instead of, uh, you know, the theatrical, yeah. theatrical release. Well, we, well, initially it was supposed to be released at the cinema, but because of the COVID lockdown, uh, the cinemas were not in operations and we have already invested a lot of money in it. And there was no way we can, there was no definite uh, information that whether, how soon we can operate again. So the best decision is to let it run at, at the OTT platform. And Disney Hotstar just started at that time. So uh, Generosity was the first movie that they acquired. And we did recoup our investment and it proved to be uh, quite a good, um, we, we take something positive out of it. It was one of the, it was number one most watched movie on Disney Hotstar when it was streaming. So basically, it means the, the investments uh, were, were recouped. Yes, and, we did, we and, did. So that was a good part. Because yes. if you, it's, it's, it was a big movie. It yes, was a it big was, action, action uh, movie. Yeah, it's a bit sad that we don't get to see it on cinema, but it did uh, get screened at, uh, in Brunei. Yeah, so unfortunately. But it's good that we are able to collaborate with DC Hotstar. So they're one of our partners as well, yeah. So let's shift gears to animation. Okay, so, animation. So can you talk about the success of Agent Ali, the movie, and what made it stand out at the box office? Okay, for Agent Ali, the movie, we the um, creator of the uh, animation is Wow. Wow animation. So we are extremely uh, lucky when we collaborated with them because their work of art, their creativity, how they uh, create the storytelling, everything resonates well with the audience, with the kids. It became a wholesome family viewing. How, when they put so much effort, you can you can even see the line of hair, the, the hair lines, you know. Because they were very particular in the Very work. detailed. Very detailed. Yes. And so uh, it's been running as a series before. So when we released it uh, for the cinema, 
we have already got the fan base for it. The children were all looking forward to it. And there were so many characters to explore. So uh, we were also lucky. We hit the cinema during the school holidays. So it became the number one most watched animation movie at that time. Well, it was it made a lot of noise, you know. It, yes. It, 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 you know, the kids were all over that movie. We were, we, they were talking, yes. they were taking pictures and, you know, it was quite a hit. Yeah. So it was running for eight weeks just before COVID lockdown. It was still running in February. Yeah. And then we thought that cinema cannot be operating anymore. So we had to pull it out. But otherwise, it was really, really doing very well. Yeah, it did. It did yes. quite well, actually. So... How do you approach the... Pro- I'm just talking about the creative process, you know. Yeah. And how do you approach the creative process when producing various genres, from drama to musical, you know, and to theatrical? How, how do you... How do you, what is your process? Mm. Okay, when we produce uh, different genres, cut across different set of audience, we focus on the essence of the story and the audience emotional connection. Okay, each genre requires a unique approach, but the end goal is always to create something compelling and engaging so that the takeaway for the audience is really there. It feels good, it makes them feel good, it makes them learn. It's entertainment, infotainment, education, everything rolls into one. So it's a human connect, which, which yes. that is more important than any yes. other. Yeah, I think you, you're absolutely right because... In the end, if you're not making a connection with your story, means you're losing, yes. you're losing your audience. Because if the audience like it very much, they would talk about it. So it will go viral and they would share. So now, when, last time when you share, you just share with a few friends. But now we are on social media with the digital technology. And you've you got hundreds of friends. Hundreds Everyone has got hundreds of friends. All over the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it becomes much more, I mean, the amplification is much more than yes. what it was Correct. before. So what has been your most memorable project and, and why? Okay, uh, I must say it's Academy Fantasia because it was, it started when nobody knew about it. We had to work really hard to convince the audience that this is what you need to see. It's unedited. This is something new. You get to learn about the struggle. You know, it's, it's, everything is real about it. We would take, okay, I must give an example. There are 12 contestants. Probably eight can really sing. But we purposely take four that can't sing so that the experience that we are selling to the audience is about the experience, it's about the journey, what it takes for you to become a singer from zero to hero. That's why people say from zero to hero. So you actually get to experience that at Academy Fantasia. So I, was, I feel that I'm not only producing a film, but I have a role to play. I have to be responsible. Because these kids, they come from out of Malaysia, from rural area. There are one case, uh, this Sabahan girl, she travelled about two days from Sampurna to get to... Um, okay. uh, to Sabah. Sabah. Uh, sorry, uh, Kota Kinabalu. From Sampurna to Kota Kinabalu takes her two days on bus journey. And she made it to the final. Wow. So it's a feeling that you have helped to nurture these young kids. You have made them... Re- you, you are partly involved in realising their dreams, change their, change their livelihood, things like that. You know, so, so the, the feeling, you feel so fulfilled at the end of the day. And you, when you see that some of them, the kids from Akribu Fantasa, they are still relevant now, like yeah, today, yeah. 15, 20 years later. So they were known as the Maggie Me instant noodle <laughs> artists, Maggie Me, they were, they were labelled. But they, some of them, I must say some of them, proved them wrong altogether. And they are really, really good. So all the hard work which you guys have put in from the first season of Academy Fantasy, I think it, it bore uh, you know, the fruits even today. Yes. Till now. So, so I think we've got to thank you enough. for We, we have to thank you for, for putting in that hard work so that you know, we have great talents uh, coming out from that show and they are still relevant to to the entertainment industry. Yes. And some of them, they uh, branch out into acting, into composing songs. So we feel that, we, well, we did something good back then. So right. th- that you feel so fulfilled about it. That's, so. that, that, that's, that's the give, I mean, that's yeah. the takeaway from, the, from a show yeah. like that. So as a producer, you not only produce, like, okay, this is your task to produce a one-hour show, and that's it. But this is like a, a long-term Life. commitment. 
This is life. Yeah, you're, you're dealing with people's life here. And the hopes and the dreams of the whole village, in fact. You know, so you feel that, like, okay, I have to do this. I have to be very responsible for this. That, that's lovely yeah. to hear that. So coming back to the factual part of it, as in, how do you ensure your productions like Majala Tiga mm. evolve with technological advancements to appeal to the new generation? It's very tricky because TV, the a viewing channel, a, a, a problem by viewing, difficult to achieve nowadays. Yeah. But to make it more interesting, so we have to integrate all these technologies. We continuously integrate the new trends like uh, the storytelling techniques, the usage of equipment, like now we've got drones. And then we have to cut into small bits, bite size for social media to travel. So that's what basically we have to keep on uh, revolutionizing the content. Yeah. yeah. And a traditional content made for the new generation. That's right. Yes. And what strategies are you implementing at TV3 to celebrate its 40th anniversary to stay ahead in the competitive media landscape? Okay, uh, for our... Oh, by the way, congratulations on the 40th <laughs> anniversary. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> of of okay. TV3, not you. <laughs> okay, I'll start it that quite early. <laughs> okay, for, so for TV3's 40th anniversary, we are focusing on the innovation of uh, some of the content, some of the programs. We have got programs uh, that has been running since 1988, like Music Music, Melody, Maja Tiger, or the talk shows or that. So we are embracing digital platforms and creating experiences that resonate with both the local and international market because we want to get new audience, basically, and the new generations. That's that's fantastic. And I think uh, I'm really looking forward for the anniversary celebration yes. on, on TV3. you should always tune into TV3. Yeah, definitely. And TV9 and TV7 and TV. <laughs> you have plugged in right. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you balance film production's artistic and commercial aspects? Okay, balancing the artistic and the commercial aspects requires understanding the market, first and foremost. The audience preferences, so we must know already what sells, what tickles the audience. So we must narrow down to this genre first. And uh, staying true to the creative vision while ensuring the project is financially viable. Yep. So you may not have a big budget, but you know that you can have some good cast in it. Some, some new cast, but maybe they are popular, all these Instagram followers or that. So it's always good for you to know when do you mix this together. So you have to balance it up. You're basically making the most of it with whatever is there rather yes. than you know blowing up your budget. And yes. Because it has to be, means it has to make financial. Yes. Viable. Sometimes we may have budget for big movies like flagships. Like for now, we are doing Original Gangsters. The budget is rumored to be 10 million yes i've yes. heard <laughs> <laughs> we've got the award-winning producer director shamsu yusuf directing that and at the same time we are also nurturing the new directors new producers so we are spending less than 1 million maybe but we want them to also work with us so we know the limit they know the limits they know the the challenges that they have to face but this is how we want to support the market as well so we support the big one the big stars with big budget, but at the same time, we are also nurturing the new one, the upcoming directors and producers. So I've I've gone through all the streaming sites and means uh, fortunately I've seen a lot of TV three content sitting on it, whether it's Disney Plus, whether it's Netflix, or mm. now with 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 Prime. Uh, what do you see as the future of Malaysian content in a global media landscape? Okay, um, I see. Malaysian content becoming more globally recognized, uh, focusing on universal themes and high production quality and stories that uh, showcase our culture, our uh, unique cultural heritage of people, so which is unique to Asians but can travel the world. You know, that, that's, that's the way to go because I think now the world is ready to, to you know, hear, watch, uh, Malaysian global stories yes. because culturally I think from an Asian perspective I think uh, uh, it resonates globally if it's told in the right way and yeah. it's produced in the right way I think uh, that that is the way to go I think with the OTT's platform's presence in the country also in Asian region Southeast Asia it helps for us to garner new audience 
I mean, they are interested to know, they are intrigued to know what stories we can offer, how unique are they con- uh, compared to what they already know. You know, they maybe I would say, say like the Hollywood, they got no roots, they got no foundation, nothing. But in Asia, there's so much more to be, to, to explore. Yeah. So there are more stories to be discovered. So I have um, great uh, confidence that one day we will be able to conquer all the platforms. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> so, can you share some insights into the success of your in-house productions and the awards you've received? Okay, our in-house productions have been successful due to our commitment to quality, first and foremost. We have been producing production at a very low budget. If you do documentaries, we don't do big scale documentaries, but I know that we are able to produce at a very low budget because we have the production team and we have the expertise, we have the strength and we have the connection. So we can we are able to produce it at a low budget. And understanding our audience and a collaborative approach with the sponsors also helps. Uh, awards are a testament to our work uh, to our hard work and creativity, but we we always want to challenge that. So when you have an award for this particular show, it means you have to work harder for the next show because you are as good as your last show. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so you've been awarded, so move on. And that is your testament of all your hard work and your connection and all the effort your team in-house has put. Yes. So I think award is, is, is basically telling that you have done something right. Yes. It's just to motivate you to work harder. Yeah. That's what I said. But yeah. you can never be satisfied with what you have achieved because your last work speaks. That's, that's the only thing you'll know. Yes. You're only known by your last work. Yes. So in production, in television, in film, you can never feel that, oh, I've done that, I've achieved this. No. Every day is a new thing. You gotta dig the well every day to take out water. Yes, yes. You cannot sit on your laurels. Yes, and you must always forever study, do lots of research, do lots of readings, go and preview movie. Don't just preview one time, preview two times. The first time you just want to get the whole look and feel, and second time you want to study the strength and the weaknesses, so you know that this is how I can improve better. You're right. You're right. So tell me, what is the biggest challenge you have faced in your career, and how did you overcome it? Okay, the uh, biggest challenge has been keeping up with the rapidly uh, changing media landscape. How you have to change your mindset, your, how you work, your, your work culture, your work ethics plays a very important role to stay relevant. So I've overcome it by, I, I feel that I've overcome it by staying uh, adaptable and continuously learning, like how I explained earlier, and being open to new ideas and technologies. Yeah, so, so you have to stay relevant. It's, first of all, your mindset, you have to change your mindset. Yeah, and you must keep learning from the, your, your managers, your peers, your staff, from anybody. Anybody can give ideas. Because now ideas, not necessarily the producer. If you're a producer, it doesn't mean that you are the only one who is qualified exactly. to give ideas. Yeah. Ideas can come from anywhere, everyone, you know. So you must constantly learn that. You must dig for information. That's, that's the key to success because, you know, every day people, means the industry is pivoting to different trends and different, yes. uh, you know, whatever is going on. And I think if you can't learn while on the, on the job, I think uh, it becomes difficult for you. You become a move. dinosaur. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't want to be a dinosaur. You don't want to be a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how do you navigate the complexities of content marketing and distribution in today's digital age? Okay, uh, we are lucky now because you can consume data uh, from lots of sources. So it's important to learn what's new in the bucket, what technology is being used now. Uh, how do you digest the data analysis? How do you use that to improve your work, your content? Because from that data, you know, you'll be able to know who's watching your content. What time are they watching it? How do they react to it? Is there uh, a repercussions of it? So you, you need to consume all this for you to produce a better content, another content. So when you use the technologies, the data or that, you, you already got all this. So you must be able to use this to adapt to your storytelling, to your content. Then only you'll be forever rejuvenating the ideas, the stories. 
and also you're talking to the right audience with the right content yes that's because right. you already have the data and you can just you can yes you, you know exactly who's watching it at what is their, their psychography you know who are they are they housewives are they blue collar white collar so you know all the data that's why how you make use of it to make sure your content uh, resonates with them it's compelling it's engaging and they feel that they want to watch keep watching so that's a success where people keep coming back you know it's a success this is what they want sometimes you are doubtful like is this what they, they really want so you try out one time two times by third time when you know you got the steady viewers you know that okay I've got the formula right. So from there, you just want to focus on the, maybe you want to focus a bit on the cosmetic, maybe you want to introduce uh, a celebrity host, maybe. Then you start focusing on the, the cosmetic. But otherwise, you, once you've got the right formula, right foundation, you know you're in good track already. Great. What advice would you give to aspiring content creators and producers? Ah, uh, What advice? No, I think I am allowed to give them advice. No, no you, yeah. you are, you're sitting in a very powerful position. You can give the newcomers a lot of you know advice so that they don't falter when they uh, like enter the industry and, and start working. Okay, first of all, the work as a um, when you choose to work in this industry, it will give you stress every single day. That so goes you decide. Saying, yeah. You decide. You want to stay. You want to stay and face this stress or you just want to walk out? But if it happens every day, you can't, you no longer associate it with problems. Oh, this is part and part, part of my work. It's not a problem anymore. So it's just like a new thing. You fix this today and another thing got hiccup and then you fix it and tomorrow they will repeat the same mistake with different, different style maybe. So every day is going to be challenging Every day is going to be tiring. You just need to be passionate about your work. You must be passionate about the people, the celebrities, the talent. And you know that you are creating an example to your peers, to your staff. So you want to work with them because they keep you, they make you feel young. Because every Keep day, like time, you're not jaded. Yes, you, you are not jaded. Because you know that, oh, I used to think like this, but... Now I have to change my mindset. This is how they think now. This is how the Gen Z is thinking. This is how the audience is reacting to it. So you constantly learn new things every day. So as long as you are passionate about it, you've got lots of patience to learn, to teach, to understand, you'll be fine. You'll be just fine. That's lovely to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, how has your leadership style evolved over uh, or through your career in media and production? Okay, when I was a producer... I would, mostly the process would dictate. They would design, they would craft out the uh, workflow, the operations, things like that. But now that I'm in a position where I have lots of experienced heads, wonderful people reporting to me, but they are immensely good. So I would empower them because I know I can trust them. And I want them to take the risk. I want them to make mistakes so that we can all learn together. So nowadays, they just tell me once, they tell me, okay, this is the update for today, this is what we're going to do. So I just have to ask, how are you going to do this? How are you going to execute this? Who's going to come in as your guest? What's the angle? What's the treatment like? As long as they can fulfill all those answers, I know the content uh, will be in good hands. You just have to trust people. You have to empower them. No, that, that's very important because that's how you, know, you can make the next layer of... of uh, great leaders that's true. where they will make true. mistake they will learn from it they will they'll move on to the next level yes so in a meeting now i would let everybody talk i only come in at the end maybe i'll just ask a little bit here and there are you sure you can do this so if nobody else has done this does that mean it's good to do or maybe nobody else is doing that because it's not really a good idea so i'll just ask them a question again as long as you can justify as long as they can convince me and they seem confident Though I know it's a very big risk that they're taking, I will still want to support them. I would love to work under you one day. <laughs> what trends do you foresee in the Malaysian creative industry in the next few years? Uh, I foresee an uh, increased integration of technology and storytelling, uh, a rise in digital content consumption, and a greater focus on uh, diverse, inclusive, diverse, inclusive narratives in the Malaysian 
uh, industry, creative industry. Finally, what are you most excited about in your current role at Primeworks? Okay, uh, in my current role, I'm most excited about pushing the boundaries, pushing the boundaries of storytelling, creating content that resonates locally and internationally, and uh, being part of an ever-evolving media landscape. So I want to be there. I want to witness all that. I want to experience it. I want to work with great people. So because there's lots of opportunities out there. So for you to keep becoming better. So I want to be there. You will be there. And with inshallah. that, no, inshallah. And, uh, and with that, thank you so much, Shaila, for coming on to What's Doing. It had been an honor for us to have you on the show. And it was a great, it was a great, you know, session of of you sharing your incredible journey, uh, and all the insights which you just told us. And uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thank you, Abid. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. It's clear that Shahila Shah is a visionary in the media industry, continuously pushing the boundaries and setting new standards in content creation. Her story is a testament to the power of hard work innovation and a deep understanding of audience engagement. I'm Abid and this has been What's Doing. Thank you for tuning in and we hope today's conversation has provided you with valuable insights into the world of media and production. Until next time, keep stewing. Mm -hmm.